Okay, injuries. Uh, Chris Baker has the SC, SC joint sprain. Uh, it's moderate. Uh, he's sore. He'll be day-to-day, -day, obviously. Trent Williams has the MCL sprain and the ankle sprain. He did not have did get the MRI or any x-ray in his ankle. It's just a sprain. But the uh, MCL is a sprain also, and that'll be day-to-day. Uh, -day. We'll have to see how he's doing. It'll be... Uh, you know, checked again tomorrow and the next day, and we'll see. Questionable will be Sean Laval. He's going through the concussion protocol. And Jordan Reed uh, with his hamstring strain. And then Trent Murphy uh, has uh, a PCL partial tear, um, something he can play with if he can deal with uh, a little bit of soreness. Everybody else should be okay. You reach the point of the season where you start to recalibrate your goals. Obviously, you had goals at the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. but I would imagine some of them now are starting to look out of reach. Do you present what you're aiming for for the rest of the season with your team differently? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you have to reestablish some goals. And uh, one thing is our work ethic can't change. It can't waver uh, no matter what your record is. We have to continue to work hard and prepare hard because we think that ultimately that will pay off in the long run. And uh, we have to continue to compete. And the uh, biggest thing is, is we want to make sure we find a way to get better at the end and continue to get better. Right now, we took a, last week, yesterday, we took a major step backwards uh, towards regression. We got to figure out a way to make sure we continue to show some improvement and uh, put yesterday behind us and figure out ways that we can get better so we have something to feel good about as we uh, finish the season. Jay, is the plan for Robert Griffin III to start on Sunday? That's the plan, yes. Is there any, has there been any conversation yet that if Robert were to go out and have a bad game on Sunday that you guys would pull him? It's, uh, you know, same thing. You know, we don't anticipate bad. You know, we anticipate good. Bad happens sometimes like it did yesterday. It was uh, not good, but uh, we anticipate him having a bounce back game and playing well. And then, uh, but we'll take uh, each game for what it is, his own entity, and move from there. But we have total faith that Robert can uh, bounce back and, and make some throws and, Get us a win. Jay, you mentioned guys working hard. On Friday, you saw the guys in there playing basketball in the locker room, and it gives off the impression a little bit that maybe things aren't going so seriously. Do you still think that these guys are coming in here, putting in all the effort that they need to? I mean, even yeah, Jason I do. Hatcher I mean, they're really playing horse in the locker room when practice is over. Yeah, yeah uh, that's when practice is over, practice is over. When meetings are over, meetings are over. Whether they go home and play Xbox or uh, study tape or have dinner with their wives and kids or – have a quick game of horse before they leave has no uh, uh, reflection on how they perform on Sunday. You know, once the meetings and practice is over, they are free to unwind however they see fit. Even Jason Hatcher said yesterday that, with regards to last week's practice, he didn't he didn't want to talk about it. Whether that was he wasn't pleased with it. Did you notice anything about the week of practices last week leading up to this game that gave you any kind of concern? No, no. I thought uh, guys moved around okay. Jason, uh, you know, did some good things early in the week in practice and. Uh, you know, it was uh, a decent week. I thought the tempo was pretty good. I thought the effort was there. I just uh, didn't, it didn't carry over to Sunday for whatever reason. Uh, so we just got to make sure we continue to uh, monitor our practices, make sure the tempo is good, make sure the fundamentals are sound, and uh, continue coaching these guys up and not let anything get swept under the rug if things go wrong. And maybe we did that too much last week. I'll go back and watch it and see. Jay, uh, last week Deshaun Jackson stood up in the locker room and um, – tried to rally his teammates around Robert Griffin III. Today he had a message on Instagram in which he said, you can't do epic stuff with basic people. He, he didn't, it, it wasn't directed at anyone in particular, but when a message like that comes out after a loss like that, do, do you need to feel the need to address that with Deshaun? Yeah, I, you know, I addressed a couple of the messages today that got uh, turned around a little bit. I don't know exactly know what Deshaun meant, but uh, I think he was frustrated a little bit with what came out about Robert. And uh, I think one of the headlines was Robert throws team under the bus uh, was one of the things that I read. And uh, Robert, whatever he said after the post game, got uh, twisted around a little bit. And uh, I addressed it today in a meeting room. And, uh, you know, it's our job in-house as players and coaches to make sure we say uh, the right things and, and uh, not let that – not let your words get twisted by the media or anybody and uh, not, not give anybody an opportunity to do that. Otherwise, it'll be he said, she said things, and there'll be Twitter wars and social media events that uh, will get out of control, and uh, we got to put a stop to it now.
When you looked back at the way Robert played yesterday, you said you couldn't quite put your finger on. You had to figure out what was holding him back. What did you see? Um, was it just more of the same? Was it a different type of struggle? Yeah, just, well, just from Robert's perspective, you take everybody else out of the picture. Um, Robert had some fundamental flaws. He did. His footwork was uh, uh, below average. You know, he uh, took three step drops when he should have taken five. He took uh, one step drop when he should have taken three uh, on a couple occasions, and that can't happen. He stepped up when he didn't have to step up and stepped into pressure. Uh, he read the wrong side of the field a couple times. Uh, so from his basic performance, just critiquing Robert, it was not even close to being good enough to what we expect from that quarterback position. How is that possible that at this point in his development, in his career, that he would have that sort of fundamentally flawed game? You know, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, sometimes once the game gets going and, and uh, the adrenaline starts going, sometimes you see things that maybe aren't there. You speed things up when you shouldn't speed things up, and uh, you feel a sense of urgency that isn't quite there. You just have to play with a little bit greater poise and uh, continue to rep these things out. So when you take a drop from – when you – catch a shotgun snap or take a drop from under center, that should be the last thing you should think about. That should come natural. And right now, for whatever reason, those aren't coming natural, and that's on us as a staff. we got to make sure we make it as natural for them as possible. Is that what happened? The interception, is that sort of what happened there at all? Or what did you see with that one? The second one? The, the, the one that was returned for a touchdown where the linebacker just read his eyes and pops through. Read his eyes, yeah. yeah. That uh, particular play, he's got to keep his eyes in the right place, and he stared down the receiver too long, and the linebacker did a great job of reading it and flowing into uh, to the passing lane and made a play. But, uh, you know, he understands that in that type of coverage, he's the free player that he has to control with his eyes and then uh, throw accordingly. But uh, he stared down Pierre a little bit too long, and, and the linebacker made a play. When, Jay. when Griffin looks at those fundamental flaws on tape, the drops or whatever the issues might be, how does he receive that information? Is he is he open? Does he? I mean, is he seeing the he's same open. thing on tape? He's open. He's absolutely open about it, and he understands he didn't play his best game. He's very frustrated with the way he played. Obviously, um, there's a lot of things he could have done better to help us win. Just talking about Robert, and uh, he has to be receptive. Uh, that's just part of the position. You got to be able to get coached and understand that when you make a mistake, you have to. Uh, learn from it and not do it again. Jay, on the, um, on the second Mike Evans touchdown yesterday, you had said about the double A. Who was responsible actually for blitzing that A gap? Was it Keenan and, or Perry? Because both dropped out, and I'm just guessing. Yeah, based on the blitz that was drawn up, it was, uh, you know, Perry's supposed to blitz. There was a little confusion there, and, and Keenan was supposed to cover the deep middle, and we were hoping that uh, based on the pressure that. Josh would not have had that extra three hitches to drop it deep to uh, right. Mike Evans. So, so. so is that basically because they had the three receivers to Keenan's side of the formation and that's was, why he's supposed well, to drop out? From a or? fundamental formation standpoint, we, we did it based off the location of a certain player and uh, there was a little confusion there for whatever reason. It did, I mean, it, I, I, guess I, I guess what I'm trying to get at it, uh, in addition why it was, is – what, why did why did Perry not know what he was supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to ask Perry why there was confusion. I haven't had a chance to talk to Perry, but there was confusion on that play. There was confusion on a couple plays that we had. There was confusion on Robert's drops on a couple plays. Those, those are equally as important as to somebody blitzing who's not supposed to blitz, which happened another time, or somebody uh, doing something else. So as coaches, we have to really take into account during a week of practice, we have to make sure everybody's on top of what they're supposed to do. And then we have to continue to grind on them, uh, both on the field and in the meeting room, so those breakdowns don't happen. They happen over the course of a game in every NFL game. Uh, but when you lose, they become magnified. And being that we've lost a lot of games, those plays become magnified. And there are huge plays in the course of a game. Uh, so. Uh, you know, the defense played extremely well for, uh, if we were on the field for 58 snaps, they played pretty darn well for 53 snaps. But there's four or five snaps in every game that you look at the tape uh, going all the way back that there's four or five snaps that we have a mental breakdown somewhere and it's costing us. We've got to figure out a way to eliminate those. You just said that uh, Deshaun wasn't thrilled with what Robert said in those post-game comments. And then on top of that, words do get twisted mm -hmm. at times. But for you, specifically based on yesterday's game, Robert's comments that he can't be great without others around him being great, do you believe that to be true for a quarterback yesterday? In Robert's performance, did he need others to be great for him to be great? Well, first of all, Robert 
needs to understand he needs to worry about himself, number one, and not everybody else. It's his job to worry about his position, his footwork, his fundamentals, his reads, his progressions, his job at the quarterback position. It's my job to worry about everybody else. And yes, everybody else needs to improve. There's no question about it. But it's not his place. Uh, his place is to uh, talk about himself, and he knows that. That's, you know, he just elaborated elaborate a little bit too much, and, uh, you know, he'll learn from it. He's 24 years old. He wants everything to be perfect around him, and yesterday was far from perfect. Uh, he's got to improve. The offensive line has to improve. Everybody has to improve, myself. I mean, you're three and seven. If you can point to one person when you're three and seven, it's easy, but you can't. It's, it's everybody has their hand in it, and, uh, and uh, we got to fight our way out of it. We got to continue to prepare. Like I said, we got to be consistent in our preparation, our work ethic, and eventually we'll get out of it. Uh, but if we start pointing fingers and, and throwing stones, we have no chance. So uh, we're going to squash all this stuff now and, and uh, continue to get better and beat San Francisco. Jay, it might be a, more of a symptom of the quarterback offensive line struggles, but why, why has Pierre's targets gone down the last couple of weeks? Is it something defenses are doing? No, what, no. What are you it's, seeing? It's nothing. And uh, we have no way of, you know, we, we try to get Pierre involved early in the game, and, and for whatever reason, his targets are down. And uh, that's on us as play callers. There are cer certain times in that game where the ball should have gone to Pierre, and we try to get to Pierre on the interception. And uh, there's a couple other ones we – want to get the ball to Pierre, but we had pressure or what have you. We just didn't get it to him, and that's just the way the game goes. And as a wide receiver, you can't, as frustrated as you are and as good as you are, like Pierre is good and frustrated, and I know he wants to help this team win, uh, there's nothing he can do about it. All he can do is go out there and, and run his routes the way he's supposed to run them, and, and uh, hopefully next week and a week after we'll get him more touches. Um, how would you rate the offensive line and pass protection, protection yesterday and also – um, this happened against Minnesota, and again yesterday, where Robert scrambles out to the right in the, um, I think, is in the red zone area, turns back, pressure sack on the other side. Some of the linemen up front had looked like they kind of stopped blocking on that side. What's the rule of thumb for offensive linemen, especially with a guy who can extend the play like Griffin? How long do they need to stay on their blocks? And well, you want to stay on your man as long as possible, but when you have a three-step drop called and, and you expect the ball to be gone. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you don't know where the ball's at. You expect the ball to be thrown. You go down and make a block downfield. Uh, then you just have to try to play football and do the best you can to find a guy and, and uh, get in his way. But that one was uh, that sack, that particular sack, that was uh, all on the quarterback. You know, One, you, you, know, you should have thrown the ball to tight end. And the two, he scrambles out of the pocket. And if it's not there, throw it away. And uh, we got third and 10 at the 10 instead of third and 20 at the 20. So uh, those are part of the is playing a position that you can't allow to happen. Having to reevaluate goals, where, what do you see those goals changing to? And is that when you start looking at younger players to see what they have for next no, year? My goal is just to continue to coach these guys up and find the guys who are going to compete and and, uh, and win the game on Sunday. You know, I, my, my only goal every week is to try to win the game we're getting ready to play. If you start thinking about 2016 and 2018, you're never going to win the game you're going to play. So we have to focus on San Francisco. We have to continue to stay consistent, like I said, with our approach and how we meet and how we practice and how dedicated we are uh, to getting this thing turned around. Because like I said, eventually uh, we will turn around if we continue to work and prepare the right way. Uh, throughout the season, uh, playing maybe less than 100%, but with this injury, is it your sense that, that this is the type of injury that he can gut out and keep going? And does your your current record have anything to do with the decision making and, and whether or not he comes back? Uh, no, my only decision will be on the trainers and Trent. And uh, if the trainers say he's healthy enough to go uh, and Trent says he can go, he'll go. But uh, if he feels uh, uh, not ready, then uh, Morgan will have to play. And Morgan did a fine job in his absence. And we feel good about Morgan. But obviously, Trent's one of our captains and one of the best tackles in the NFL. We need him. Uh, but uh, if he's not good, uh, we'll uh, – Obviously not playing, but that will come down to the trainers and Trent later in the week. Yeah, Robert talks a lot about wanting to be a, a great quarterback. Do you think maybe he's trying too hard to be a great quarterback and not worrying so much about being just a solid, consistent, competent quarterback? Yeah, sometimes all the time? you don't need great. You don't need a lead at that position on every snap. And uh, he's very uh, obviously very competitive, uh, but uh, we just need him to do what he's supposed to do, you know, just – Take your drops away the right way and, and throw the five-yard sticker out when you're supposed to and, and uh, do the best you can. Uh, sometimes he worries about it a little bit too much, but he's a great competitor, and uh, we just got to try to get him better. Um, his frame of mind is in the right place. It just doesn't come out the right way sometimes, but uh, I think uh, he wants to get better. He knows he has a long way to go to get better, 
And uh, if he stays on the right track as far as work ethic and, and listening and preparing, then he'll get there. Yeah, you briefly touched on this, but I'm curious your thoughts on the way Moses played yesterday uh, versus yeah. extended run. I thought he had pretty good. You know, he had uh, one running play where he forgot to block the end. Uh, but uh, overall, he uh, he did some good things, you know, coming off the bench cold. But he, you can see that, uh, you know, just since we got him, he's a lot more fluid and natural at left tackle. Just we have a Pro Bowl left tackle, and we've been trying to work him at right tackle to uh, get him to learn that. But he, he did a good job at left tackle and pass protection. Yeah, we won't get to talk to Haz until later on in the week. You guys have obviously had to blitz maybe a lot more than, than – either one of you want to what is the 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 greatest challenge that you face when you're constantly having a blitz to make up for the lack of natural pressure is it just again the safety's kind of being out of whack and not being where they need to be because you're blitzing those guys yeah, there a lot? are certain issues you put your corners on an island and sometimes you when they change strength you have to change with them and the one guy's got to blitz one guy's got to drop and sometimes there's a miscommunication there uh you know but basically is you know, when you when the offense happens to pick up the blitz and their max protection, then you one on one with Breland or your corners against elite receivers like Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans, and uh, puts them on an island. So uh, there are risks involved in blitzing, uh, but there are definite rewards also. We just have to find the fine line and uh, do the best we can as far as mixing them up and uh, getting pressure, getting home when we do blitz. Yesterday we blitzed a couple of times, we didn't come close. They did, a, they did a great job of protection, and Josh did a great job of getting it out and knowing where his quick receivers were. Jay, you've spoken about um, catastrophic mistakes, I guess, by a quarterback, and whether that's interceptions or sacks for a loss. Where do you put the two cases yesterday of, of Robert overthrowing Deshaun? In, in other words, how costly was that, and what do you attribute that to, and um, how can you fix that? He fixed that going forward. Well, those are those are big plays in the game, and you just, you know, usually he hits that. You know, he hits that in practice. He hits it uh, quite often. He just missed them. The difference in that game is Josh McCown hit his, and we missed ours. You know, he hits Mike Evans three times for big, huge plays, and we missed Deshaun three times for big, huge plays. So uh, you flip them if Josh overthrows Mike and we hit ours. I'm a little happier right now. But uh, like I said, we are not. Uh, doing a good job of making plays, period, anywhere, on offense or on defense, and uh, big plays, game-changing plays. Um, and we got to find a way to hit them. Uh, Jay, just uh, Redskin, the, the defense right now is on pace uh, for tying, if not beating, a franchise low of just three interceptions. Is this something that you're addressing with Hazlitt to fix? How do you even change this? Well. Hazlitt can't intercept the ball for the guys. You know, we have to have guys break on the ball and make some plays. We have to have defensive linemen get their hands up in passing lanes and linebackers to read the quarterback eyes and getting their hands up in passing lanes. And uh, we just have to do a good job as a team defense and getting pressure on the quarterback and forcing errant throws. When the quarterback has time to scour the field and, and read zones, the quarterbacks in the NFL nowadays are going to not throw interceptions, but when you get pressure on them and you force them into some mistakes, you get your hands up in the passing lanes and the secondary is able to break on some throws, you have some chance. Uh, but overall, from a secondary linebacker play and pass coverage, hasn't been quite good enough to get the picks. And obviously, it works hand in hand with our pass rush at times. It hasn't been good enough to get the picks. But hopefully, they'll come. We just got to stick with our plan and uh, just keep trying to rush the passer as best we can and, and disrupting the quarterback's rhythm. and. Uh, hopefully they'll come in bunches. They just have not come. Um, big, big change in topic to wrap this up. Uh, yesterday, the DA inspected a couple of teams. The Bucks uh, were one of them. I think mostly road teams were inspected. But did the Redskins have any interaction that you're aware of with DEA agents yesterday? Uh, DEA agents? DEA no. Agents, that's no. the first okay. I heard of it. No. Okay. Nothing. I don't think. Did we? Okay. <laughs> I hope not.